Hi, in this video we're going to update our GPS tracking demo to include the address of a location. So right now we don't have a street address. By the end of this, you will. So the key to make this address thing work is we're going to use a service provided by Google which will automatically translate things for us. It's quite simple actually. So I'm going to embed a, a little more code inside of this section called update UI value. So what we're going to include now is called the geocoder. So it's a class that's provided to us in Android. So geocoder is a new geocoder and it needs some kind of a context. So let's put in main activity dot this. Now this isn't guaranteed to work. So we're going to have to insert a try and a catch. So if there's an error, our program won't crash at least. So the geocoder is going to provide us theoretically with a list of most recently seen addresses. And so we're going to define a list of type address. So we're going to do geocoder dot get from location and we have to provide it a location. So we know a location, it's in the location variable. And we'll do get latitude and get longitude. And you can see that the parameter is asking for the maximum results and we only care about one, the most recent one. So we'll get one. Now, I've never actually been able to get more than one address, so I'm not quite sure how the geolocator actually provides a list of things. But anyway, I only care about the one that was most recently seen. So then the next job is to provide a text update. So we have a text view called address, and we'll set the text. So we'll get the address number zero, so the first one in the list. So that's item zero. And then, as you can see, that there are lots of pieces to that address. So we could get the county, the city, we could get the zip code, we could get all those things. For right now, I'm just going to get the street address. But go ahead and experiment with the others if you want to add more than just the address line. If for some reason this whole thing fails, I'll just say set text and we'll point to the uh, user to say, hey, didn't work. Now we could do the capture of the exception and send it off to another level, but let's leave this as a simple app. Let's see what happens when I run it now. So you can see that I have the same GPS coordinates, the latitude and longitude, but the location is actually found in Seattle. Well, you can guess I'm probably not in Seattle right now. I teach at Grand Canyon University here in Phoenix, Arizona. So if you want to adjust your virtual phone to go somewhere else, you can. There's a settings button down here, this three dots here, and it allows you to adjust. So Seattle, as you can see, is the default location. If I want to search for somewhere else, let's go to London and let's go to UK. So we're in downtown London somewhere. Let's save the point and click OK. So I have this other point. Now I'm going to choose set location. So that will supposedly set the location inside of my phone. So do I have to wait for it to update? Let's see if I change the number of seconds that it's being updated at. Uh, let's see if that does anything. Let's turn it off and start again. And there it is. Okay, so now I got a new location. So try it on your real phone. You'll probably get better results than a virtual phone. But you can move around the world at light speed if you want to using your virtual phone. Okay, so that gives us a pretty good starting point for building any kind of a GPS application. So this will save a location. Now think about how you would build a real app you might have a list of recent locations. We'll do another tutorial that will actually put up a map on the screen and you can show the locations and save them as you go. So you could like leave breadcrumbs. So more to come, but for right now, this will get you to the basics of how to get this fused location service working and to get permissions. So I hope you had fun. This will be another tutorial in the coming minutes here about working with more GPS apps.